Hello and welcome back to the channel from Doha, Qatar. My 61st country and my first trip outside of Europe here in 2023. As you can see, it is very windy here, standing with the breeze coming in from the Persian Gulf. In this video, I'm going to wander around Doha, the capital, today visiting the Corniche, which is this walkway, running along all the way towards the skyscrapers. And then tomorrow morning, I will get up and visit some of old Doha, which has an interesting souk. I'm only here for a couple of days on my way to another country, and I've passed through Doha's airport many times, but I've never taken the time to actually get out of the airport and spend a couple days. And I've been to Bahrain and Kuwait and Saudi and the UAE. And so I thought I would tick Qatar off on my way to a country which I'm not going to reveal just yet. You will find out once I get there. But until then, let's explore this small nation which is best remembered in recent months for holding the World Cup last year. I almost forgot to mention as I walk around the Dao Harbour here towards the Corniche that behind me there is the Museum of Islamic Art. It's a beautiful modern building and it contains over 1,400 different pieces of art from three continents. So it is worth a visit if you have time. So this here, the Dao Harbour, which holds lots of traditional boats. I'm sure you can find one to ride and pay a little bit of money for a group or whatever the deal is. I'm not too sure. I'm just gonna continue walking. The Corniche, if it's already started, is full of people here. It's a Friday, which of course is the day of rest in Islamic countries. And some nice greenery around, modern buildings on the other side of the main road there. And then the view of the skyscrapers in the distance and the water with the old boats. It's a very nice scene here in the late afternoon. As I walk along the waterfront, I thought it would be interesting to show you the population breakdown of Qatar because it is quite interesting when you look at the statistics in preparation for the World Cup many migrant workers from different countries came here to help build the infrastructure the metro the stadiums to work in the restaurants etc the hotels and when you look at it this is as of 2019 I'm gonna read out the population breakdown Qataris only make up 9.3% of the population at 330,000 people. So who's number one? India, with 700,000 people, 21.8% of the population. That means there are twice as many Indians living here in Qatar today, probably more by this point than there are Qataris, which is quite interesting indeed. Second, you have Bangladeshis making up more than Qataris, 12.5%, then Nepalese, 12.5%, then after Qataris who come forth, Egyptians make up 9.35%, there are many Egyptians here as there are Qataris, then it goes on, Philippines, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Sudan, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, so a very diverse population and you'll see that when you walk around. Most people are not Qatari. And so that must have changed the country in so many ways over the last couple of decades in preparation for this World Cup. I know there are a lot of migrant workers before the World Cup anyway. And if you look at the population breakdowns of Bahrain and the UAE, you see something pretty similar. But here in Qatar, given the fact the population is under 3 million, it's really easy to influence the statistics if 700 and something thousand Indians suddenly come and work here. And so what you have now is all this influence from these different countries where you've got a great diversity of food, people that you're gonna bump into on the streets. And in general, the culture of the country has probably changed dramatically. 
Here is the rather well-known Pearl Monument, which is symbolic to Qatar's history, once having a fairly thriving pearling industry. So the Corniche Promenade here is seven kilometers long. I don't quite know how far I'm going to make it, if I will reach those skyscrapers on the other side. It bends all the way around there, but let's see. I hope my microphone is holding up well with the wind sound. The breeze is very strong here. I'm even wearing a jumper. Many of you might be thinking, you're in Qatar, what are you doing wearing a jumper? Well, it is February and they do have slightly colder temperatures here than you might think in January, February and also in December. So it's around 22 degrees today, but this breeze means that walking around in a t-shirt is actually a little bit chilly. And that's probably one of the good things about Qatar's location. You have a nice breeze constantly coming in from the Persian Gulf. Of course, as many of you know, the FIFA World Cup was held here late last year. And although lots of people have their arguments about the controversies you could say surrounding the World Cup, I think overall it's been a very positive thing for the country because how else do you improve certain things like the lives of migrant workers without having scrutiny which then enforces change. I personally wasn't here for the World Cup of course, this is my first visit, but from the outside it seemed like a success. I don't know what it was like to be here as a supporter, to use the metro when it was really busy, when all the hotels were booked, how was the service and all these things. If you went to the World Cup, you can leave your comments below, share your experience here. But in terms of the football, I think it was quite a successful World Cup. We had some of the best matches we'd ever seen. Saudi Arabia beating Argentina in the first match and seeing teams like Morocco get very far. South Korea beating Portugal. There are many examples of the underdog winning Tunisia's famous 1-0 win against France. It was very entertaining to watch on my laptop whilst I was in Morocco for most of the World Cup. Probably the country has seen a lot of improvements and changes. You would hope that the World Cup has brought a lot of positivity to this country and a lot of things to be hopeful for for the future. And I've never been one to say that we shouldn't visit a certain country because of this particular thing or that. I don't want to dive too much into politics, but obviously I've been to many countries around the world and Qatar is no different. I don't boycott countries because of politics and things like that. I go there with an open mind and don't try to force my views on people who have lived a different life with a different history and a different background to myself. Great views here of the skyscrapers across the way. I'm gonna continue walking on a bit further. I don't quite know how far I'll get, but let's see. So I continued my walk along the Corniche and I just had some food here at this restaurant called Al Morjan, which has amazing views of Doha's skyline. I just had falafel and tabbouleh and I'm gonna end things here for today. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to make my way to the main souk in Doha, which is on the other side where I came from. 
so I will try some Qatari food then and I will see you in the morning. Hello, good morning and welcome back to Doha. I am staying just down there at somewhere called Hampton, which is very close to the Hilton. And this morning I am going to walk from where I'm staying to the metro station and then it is one stop to the nearby souk. I want to show you the metro because it is the world's largest driverless metro recently opened and it's quite an interesting experience to take it. So let's go. As we make our way, take a look at this architecture. It's a very unique and interesting style with Arab influence, yet there's like a touch of modernity with the blue glass on there. What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. There's lots of buildings that look like this. So my metro stop is called National Museum. You can get an idea of what some of the buildings and areas look like as we head a bit more inland from the Corniche. I showed mostly the waterfront yesterday. As you might expect, everything brand spanking new. It's 10 Qatari Rials for one of these little cards. And then it costs just two Rials for one journey. And you can top them up and use them. So I'm going just one stop to Souk Wakif. There are three different classes on the metro train. You have gold, which is another tier which you pay more for on your card. Then there is, so this is gold right here. Then you have family, I guess women and children. And then after family is standard, which is where I belong. <laughs> And the picture is just of three men. The seats in the colour of the Qatari flag. And a pretty cool feature here is that there's two seats right at the front and you can view Doors the journey. Stand clear. So as you can see, the metro here is pretty impressive. It gets a lot busier at other stations. It's because I'm at the end of the line and it's kind of uh, the late morning. It's not so busy right now. And it's actually one of the fastest metros in the world as well. I think the trains reach up to 100 kilometers an hour at times. This way to the souk. Another gorgeous modern building over there. I believe it is a cultural center, that one. But let me know in the comments if you have more knowledge about it than I do. According to my Google Maps, the entrance to the souk is round about here. I don't know if there's a main gate or something, but this is where it begins at least. On first impressions, I have to say, it feels quite modern and clean. Yet these buildings date back to the late 19th century and early 20th century. They have been renovated extensively since 2006. 
and it's a very pleasant area though and somewhere that could be a nice light introduction to the Arab world in a very kind of sanitized way I think. Certainly a lot of places to pick up different souvenirs. Some nice places to sit down outside, have a bite to eat, maybe a tea or an Arabic coffee. It almost feels like if Disneyland made a ancient Arabian section <laughs> with these buildings here the way they've been made to look rustic the Qatari flag flying high there despite feeling quite modern there is a slight charm to it especially on a relaxed Saturday morning here where you have a mix of locals tourists and as I've been walking around I've seen Persian restaurants Azerbaijani Syrian Lebanese so there is a real mix of different options to delve into in terms of food. If you could come here for a meal in the evening or something like that, I think you would also find quite a good atmosphere as well as here in the morning where it's fresh and more relaxed weather-wise I had to take off my jumper because the heat was starting to get to me for the first time a lot less breezy than yesterday so I'm gonna now find somewhere to try some Qatari food and hopefully it will feel authentic let's see All right, so I'm now sat down here in typical Qatar style. It's very quiet and I've got the national dish of Qatar, which is majboos. You can get it generally with chicken, mutton, which are the two most popular versions, but you can also have it with fish and it is a slow cooked, smoky, rich flavor. And here it's coming accompanied with salad and soup. Here we go, I've just about managed to fit everything in the frame. So I'm gonna do this with my hands, as is the traditional way. This one has little pieces of caramelized sort of dried onion. Let's pick into the mutton. Oh, it is very hot. The steam is coming out here. Very good. Just like falling off the bone. Like in Saudi, Kuwait, Bahrain, you get huge portions, immense amounts of rice. And so don't be too ashamed if you can't finish it all. Generally, you share it with other people. And um, it's kind of in the culture not to always finish everything. It's kind of just showing the sign of abundance um, by giving you more than you need in terms of the hospitality, particularly in um, Arabic culture. All right, so I've now finished my lunch and I'm back here near my hotel where I'm staying and I'm gonna end the video here. I hope this gave you an idea of what Doha is like. It is worth coming to for a few hours on a layover and to see somewhere a bit different on your way to Asia or on your way to Europe or wherever it may be and I'm gonna catch a flight tonight I need to get back to my hotel take a shower and check out and then make my way to the airport and I will not reveal where I'm going as I said at the beginning of this video stay tuned for the next one to find out where I'm going to be see you then cheers